everybody, welcome to Rex Engine. In this video, I want to show you a feature called Attack Sets. Now, Attack Sets are a new feature in Rex Engine 1.30. And what Attack Sets let you do is group multiple attacks together in one grouping, and then toggle between those attacks with the press of the button. So if you think of something like Mega Man, where he's got his basic attack, which is the pea shooter, and then he's got, you know, upwards of eight different Robot Master sub-weapons, and in the Super NES versions, you can press the L and R buttons to toggle those. This is the same thing. So you can press a button to switch between different sub-weapons, or regular weapons, or anything that's in the attack set. So I've set up the player here for this demonstration, where he's got three different sub-attacks. Um, he's got a pea shooter, he's got a boomerang, and he's got a spike ball. So let me show you guys those really quick. So I'm going to click on the pea shooter and just enable that. So here's the pea shooter. And you can also charge that to release a cluster shot. Here's the boomerang. And here's the spike ball. Kind of like a Castlevania style axe sub weapon thing going on with that. So, to make those into an attack set, um, ignore me for one second. Okay, so if we look at the hierarchy of the player right now, he's got his attacks, game object, and inside that he's got his melee attack. He's got a pea shooter for when he's flying, which we're not using here, so I'll actually just delete that. And then he's got these three sub-attacks. He's got the pea shooter, the boomerang, and the spike ball that we just saw. So to make those into an attack set so we can toggle them, I'm going to make a new child game object of attacks. And I'm just going to call it subweapon attack set. So I'm going to move all of these, uh, these sub-attacks into this game object. And this isn't really important, it's just for organization. Like, I like to keep things neat and tidy. So now, on the main game object, on the sub-weapon attack set game object, I'm going to find the attack set component in the Rex Engine files, and I'm going to drag that onto the sub-weapon attack set. So now we can see in the inspector, this guy has an attack set on it. So there's only a couple options on the attack set. There's is enabled, which means whether or not any of the attacks inside the attack set will function. And then there's a list called attacks. So we want every attack in the attack set to be part of this list. So I'm going to change its size to three, and then I'm going to drag individually each one of these sub-attacks onto the list. So the pea shooter, the boomerang, and the spike ball. And we have one more option here, which is default attack. And the default attack is going to be one of the other attacks here. So we're dragging it in twice. The default attack is which attack you start with, basically, before you toggle anything. So we'll make the pea shooter the default attack. So if we hit play, by default, the pea shooter should be enabled. And now if I hit, um, I believe it's set to the Z key by default. If I hit Z, now the boomerang's enabled. Hit it one more time, the spike ball's enabled. And if I hit it again, it's going to loop back around to the start, so this should give us the pea shooter. And that's it for setting up an attack set. Um, the basics of that are really, really simple. But there's some other cool stuff going on in addition to just setting it up. So one thing we'll notice is that we have weapon energy up in the upper left hand corner. And the weapon energy is set, so right now there's no meter, I've just got it set so it's um, a numerical value. And we've got 28 of that by default. And so every time I fire this pea shooter, this pea shooter is set um, in its own attack to take one energy. It's this energy cost value right here. So we could make that five, for example, and then this would be, this would take five. And what we'll notice right now is that if I toggle between these weapons, so if I switch to the boomerang, that's set so it takes four. 
If I switch to the spike ball, I have this also set to take four. And these are all using the same sub weapon energy. But what I might want to do is have these set so they use a different amount of energy for each attack. So if you look at something like Mega Man, every sub weapon that he has um, has its own unique energy bar, and they all take varying amounts of energy. Can. So let's say we want to give the boomerang its own different magic bar. Um, so if you look under the attack component for any of these, one of the first options here is slots. And inside that, there's an MP section, which right now has nothing in it. So what that means if there's nothing in the MP section is that it's going to draw from the default magic point bar that the player has. So if we look on the player, the very bottom game object is energy. And under that, we've got HP and MP. And each of those is just a different bar. One's for their hit points, their health, and one is their weapon energy or their magic points. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy their MP bar and I'm gonna make a new one that I'll just call MP boomerang and we'll give the boomerang its own, its own magic points. So right now this bar is set to load this guy right here. So this is, the, this is what the player's magic points looks like. So I'll make a new prefab for that. And the only real difference I'm gonna have, it can look exactly the same for this demo. I'm just gonna scooch it a little bit further over to the right so it's not overlaid on top of the other one. Save that as a prefab. And then on the player under their new MP boomerang object, I'm just gonna slot in the prefab that we just made. Let's scoot it over further to the right. Um, and I guess for the sake of differentiating these, I'll give the player 10 weapon energy instead of 28 for this one. So now in the boomerang, so we go back to this MP slot, which like we said before, if it's empty, it's just gonna use the player's default magic points. Now I'm gonna slot this with the MP boomerang object. And what this means is that the boomerang is now going to use its own unique energy bar. So now if we hit play, so we still only see our default MP, with the 28 hearts. But if I switch over to the boomerang, now we can see that the new MP bar, the new 10 hearts has appeared. And if I fire the boomerang, we should see the 10 is decreasing each time. But the regular 28 is staying the same. There we go, it's a little bit bigger. And now we've expended too much of the boomerang magic points and so we don't have enough to fire it again. And now if I switch back to the spike ball, we can see this is still using the, the default MP bar. As is the charge shot. And that's because we didn't slot anything into the MP slot for the spike ball or the charge shot. So if you do this, you can either use the default, you can have a single MP pool. So if you think of something like Castlevania, where every sub weapon is drawing from the same pool, you can do that just by leaving the slot empty. Or if you slot that with something, you can have a unique MP bar for every sub weapon that you've got. And the one last thing that I want to show you guys in this video is, you'll notice this little icon here next to the hearts. And I've got a different icon for the buster shot and for the boomerang, and for the spike ball. And all of those icons are enabled or disabled at will when you toggle to that attack. And all those things are, they're a really simple prefab. Um, each of those just has their own prefab, which is literally just this little icon thing. Um, there's nothing fancy about it whatsoever. Um, it's just a sprite renderer. And I've got a UI anchor, and all that does is just positions it on the screen. So if you want those game objects, if you want to have that kind of custom UI for different attacks, those are under the UI subheading on the attack component. And they've got an option here called the UI prefab. And all that does is load in any prefab that you slot. Um, and that'll take any type of game object. So you can put multiple sprites in there. You can put just one sprite in there. You can have basically any type of UI that you want for each weapon. And then underneath that, there's a checkbox called only show when enabled. And if this is not turned on, then that UI for that weapon is always visible. And if it is turned on, then that UI is only visible when the weapon is, is enabled.
And so in conjunction with the attack set, what that means is that if these all have their own UIs and they're all set to only show when enabled, it's automatically going to show and hide the unique UI for that weapon every time we toggle to it. So if you look in the upper left here where the mouse is, that's going to change for us automatically and we don't need to do any additional code or anything. So that's it for the attack sets. I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you guys next time.